today I have the pleasure of introducing you guys again. My audience already knows about her, but I want you guys to know who Lisa Washington is and what she represents. And I want you to be able to see yourself and her and how she lives her life, challenges it and all, you know, um, personally, emotionally, spiritually, she gets it. And today we're going to just kind of go into that rabbit hole with her and see how we can live the life of our dreams, purpose-driven and well, completely well. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, I know you. I know you completely, and I'm, I just love you dearly. And I want you to take a moment um, and just kind of tell people who Lisa Washington is. I, I, I'm taken back to the day when we talked about kind of rebranding you to life with Lisa Washington. Yeah. And just seeing the holistic life that you live. I mean, you have an amazing family. I mean, when you go into a home, you'll think it's a staged home that somebody's trying to sell. Um, and then, you know, your your menu and how you eat and, and serve your family and your yeah. community, your relationship with God. I mean, yeah. girl, you'll be thinking like, is this attainable? <laughs> but um, we'll see today that it is attainable for yeah. you, but your way. Yes. Your life is your life. My life is my life. Right. And your life is your life. Exactly. So we're going to talk about it. Yeah. Well, tell the people. Who is Lisa Washington? Let me tell the people who Lisa Washington is. But you know what's funny? That's a very hard question mm -hmm. um, because... It encompasses so many things at different seasons and different times. And I think if I had to like sum up what Lisa Washington is, she's a woman that is always growing and evolving and discovering really who God created her to be. Of course, I'm a mom. I've been married for almost 30 years. I have a 36-year-old son, a 23-year-old son who just got married, two beautiful grandbabies right. that I absolutely love. I'm a kidney transplant recipient, and my husband was my donor. Okay. Right? I'm a chef, an author, a motivational speaker, an artist. And I, I think what I love about just being able to be Lisa Washington is that um, I get to discover what that is every day. And I think mm. everyone should do that versus putting a stamp mm -hmm. on who you are. Yeah. If you're going to stamp anything, stamp the discovery of what that is. Yeah. So that's Lisa. Doesn't that make life a lot more full of bliss? It does. Less stressful? Yes, it does. In flow? Yes. In flow. And you really, I can attribute and, and really thank you. Give your flowers right now because you helped me to figure that out. Yeah. Because I had this whole... Thing, like what April's life is going to be because I was going to do this and I was going to do this and I was going to get this bag and I just, you know, I just knew, but it was such, it was so rigid. Right. It was super rigid. It was just like, so when I didn't accomplish certain benchmarks, when I thought I should, I was like in the blues. You know, I was feeling like, mm -hmm. oh God, I feel defeated. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's not what it was about. Mm -hmm. And we had a very, very pivotal conversation. And I kind of want to make sure that we mirror that today because I think yeah. it was life-changing for me. Wow. You know, um, and I was smack dab, you know, headed into my own health journey. Right. And you were speaking so like uplifting. And I'm talking about a, a kidney transplant. Yeah. You know, I really want to kind of tap into that because not that everybody has to, you know, experience a cancer diagnosis like I did or lose their husband or their wife or lose a child or, you know, have to go through kidney disease and, and look for a donor and go through all of those things. But everybody has something. Yes. And how do we flip that something upside down and make that the thing that I mean, like rockets you into the next level of you. Well, I think the thing about me, you made a really good point about you don't have to be a cancer patient or I'm a kidney transplant survivor and oh, you lost a husband. I've gone through a divorce. I think what people have to do is take time out to look what's in the pot mm -hmm. of yourself. Look in your soul. Mm -hmm. Like what is down there? I think what we do is we think everything, every answer is outside ourselves. Right. It's not. It's within. Right. And I really think practicing mindfulness, meditation, prayer, getting still mm -hmm. to see what, what's down in that pot that God has placed down there for you to tap into, to go to the other side right. of whatever you're looking for in your life. So mm -hmm. I think it's stillness, mindfulness, prayer, and just looking down in there. I think that's what having kidney disease in my whole life mm -hmm. made me look down there yeah. constantly. Cancer mm -hmm. makes you look down there. Makes you. But Sit you don't have to be yeah. made to look down there. Mm -hmm. You just have to take a time out just to do so. Yeah, you have to decide. Just to decide to look down in that yeah. pot. 
Mindfulness. Mindfulness is something that I don't think people really understand how you just stop. I'm seated here right now. Don't worry about what's, oh my God, I, you know, I need to get gas when I leave here. Oh, the yeah. kids. Oh, we got this. Oh, I got that. Oh, I got this, this bill. I got this more. No, no, no. Just be where you are right now. We were right here having an amazing conversation. Right. That's all that matters right now for the next few minutes, you know? Yes. And, and that's a practice, right? It is a practice. That's a practice. Um, You know what I want to ask? I want to ask them. I want to go. Just go there. Well, just go there. Just go there. Okay. Now, who is God to you? Who is God to Who's me? God to me? That's a Washington. beautiful. That's a beautiful question. I believe God is the all creator mm-hmm. of all that is in the universe. Right. God is my Father. God is the one that moves, created the universe, but I feel moves the universe. Mm-hmm. But I think He also allows us to be co-creators with Him as well. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. who God is for me. Yes, that's who God is for me too. Mm-hmm. Co-creators, the God in us. Yes. What is religion to you? Religion to me, that's that's an interesting thing mm-hmm. because that's changed over the seasons of my life. Right. When I was really young, religion was going to church and hallelujah and the Bible and singing. Mm-hmm. And then when I was probably like in my 30s, God opened my eyes up to what religion was. It is a practice of me connecting with the creator through creation. That right. can be at the beach Water, trees, flowers, me connecting with you. For me, that's religion. It is not about a building or a place. It is about my connection with those that are connecting with the creator. And yes, I find that in church. Yes, I find that when I'm having lunch or dinner. Mm -hmm. But that's what it is for me. You know, it's interesting because I'm, I am I was in that space as well, just kind of just being really, really, really immersed in religion, you know, coming up. Yeah. You know, people go, I wasn't raised in a church, so I'm spiritual. And I think people start just picking up little things to say. Yeah. It just sounds, and I'm like, well, what does that mean mm-hmm. that you're spiritual? Mm-hmm. What does it mean that, you know, you grew up in the church? What does it mean? I think the bottom line is just having your relationship with God, because I don't understand, I understand why people are running to like dead ends and, and don't really have a perspective on what they should be doing or yes. confused or chaotic. Yes. Um, because I don't understand how you allow yourself to say that the creator, the beloved God that we serve created you, but you want to do it your way. No. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like the cars we drive, we build the car, but we don't want to adhere to how they say to drive them. Just, no. Just get in the car. Yeah. I don't have to use brakes. Yeah. I don't have to use no brakes. I don't know how to turn it on. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to turn on the lights. I don't know how to, you know, do I even, I don't get gas. I just, you're not going nowhere. Right. So it's, it's, it's relative, you know? So I think like with, with even launching this podcast, I think it was very important to just kind of like start these conversations because I, I wanted to start with that breath of life, you know, yes. you've given me breath to do some amazing work and now I just need direction. I have to yes. be surrendered how important is it to be surrendered to your life? You know, because I know there's some people in the world that are completely okay just never thinking about being an entrepreneur. Right. They're completely like positioned to lift up the hands of those that are called to be that, you yes. know? And there are people that are completely content just, you know, working um, a regular job in the middle of Florida or middle of Ohio. And that's just what they're there to do. They take care of their kids. They support a husband. You know, they take care. They may be a caregiver for a parent, full circle right. of life, but never. But those big dreamers, those people, those big ideas, those people that are drawn to, to the big cities and, and that sort of thing. How do you, how important is for them to be surrendered to the life that they were born to lead? I think it's extremely important because of the fact that it was birthed inside of you. Right. Right? I think that's very important. When I was a little girl, yeah. I always believed that I was going to do something really great, even though I was a sick little girl. Yeah. And, but my mom never treated me like I was sick. She always pushed me out to just go for it. But I always believed that I was going to do something really great in my life. Mm-hmm. And I learned to surrender to that. Now, it can be very frustrating when you have those big dreams and you get those walls that hit yeah. and you're like, well, what? I mean, I have this really big dream, this really big thing I'm supposed to do, but you still have to be surrendered to the process mm-hmm. or how that's supposed Ooh, to come the process. about. You see? Yeah. You have to be surrendered to the process. I think about Joseph in the Bible and mm-hmm. how he's supposed to win and he's going to lead his brothers and save mm-hmm. his family. Now, Joseph didn't know anything about that. But he was surrendered to the process of mm-hmm. allowing his character to be developed, mm-hmm. to be able to be 
second in command. Right. And I've learned I have to do the same thing with my big dreams. You don't give them up, but you surrender to the process of getting there. Okay, so let's talk about that. Um, let's talk about Lisa's process. Cause really, I mean, I'm telling you, girl, you are like, you are truly the blueprint to me mm-hmm. in so many different ways. Um, everybody has to have their process because our, our, where we started from and what we've gone through and what God has allowed, mm-hmm. um, shapes all of us. It does. And some of us get stuck, you know, and we have to find the right process that yes. works for us. So tell us about your process and, and the modalities and, and, and the different things that you've been introduced to that have been a part now, part of your life. Yeah. Um, well, I think the thing that's been really cool is, first off, starting off with yoga. Yeah. That was one of the first things that helped me to calm my mind down. Mm-hmm. I mean, yoga is one of those things that just is a wonderful mind-body exercise. Right. But it actually helps you to get really quiet within, mm-hmm. especially when you put that with breath work. So I do yoga. I do breath work. Um, I also do Reiki. I went and got certified mm-hmm. as a Reiki master, which I'm really encouraged by. And that's just energy work. Because when the energy within ourselves, if that is not in line, mm-hmm. we're all scattered. It's hard to even process what you need to be processing if you are not aligned with yourself. Another Mm -hmm. modality that I use, which I absolutely love using, is affirmations. It's Mm -hmm. affirming. That helps me to move through my process because a lot of times those narratives that you tell yourself, those stories that you tell yourself, Mm -hmm. they get in the way of the process. So constantly saying affirmations over and over again. Mm -hmm. I love saying different affirmations to get my mind where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing is nutrition. Nutrition is really, we don't think that the process has to do with anything that has to do with nutrition, like food has to do with this process. It does, because there's certain foods that help help us to move forward and certain foods that pull us back within and it can cause depression. You know, there are oh, foods Lord. that can help us to feel really good about ourselves. So nutrition is really important. So these are the things I use for my process to get to the other side of what I'm trying to get to my destiny. Are we really what we eat? We are so what we eat. Oh, Lord. Let me find out. I'm a big cookie. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Not no more, y'all. Not no more. No, we, really are, we truly are what we eat. The mm-hmm. body is always turning itself over weeks, mm-hmm. months, yeah. years. And what is it? what are we using to turn that over? It's what we put in our mouths. Mm-hmm. But it's not just what we put in our mouths. It's also what, how we digest life. How we digest life. Go, that's go that's there. a nutrition. Yeah. It's like, how are you? Like when I'm meeting with my clients, I'm always asking them, okay, that's great. We can change and work on your diet. That's great. Yeah. But you know, I'm concerned about what you just said about your body. I'm concerned about how you feel about your career. Yeah. I'm concerned about what you're saying about your relationship. Oh, yeah. It is about how, how are you digesting life? Right. And usually how you digest in your food physically is a lot of times how you digest in your life. Because you're thinking when you're eating wholesome, when you're eating things that are good for you, mm-hmm. usually the time it's because that's a thinking, but mm-hmm. you're also communicating that as well. So oh always God. look at those two things, they go together. How you digest food is also how you digest your life. Yeah. So those blockages in career or personal show up in the body. It shows up in the body. Yeah. It shows up in the body and how you are taking care of yourself. If you're not feeling good about your relationship, you see it in what you what you put on your plate. If you're not good, feeling good about your body, you see it in what you put on your plate. That's why that's so important. Those affirmations and affirming yourself because it's like I have to care about me. You like do. you deserve. Like you are enough. You deserve better. Then I'm going to choose better. Yeah. I'm going to get up earlier. I'm going to be mindful of what I put in my body. I'm going to be yeah. mindful of the conversations I have, the clients I take on. And I I was a work in progress, people, in that area because I was just like. As long as I'm, I felt like as long as I go after goals and are financially stable, mm-hmm. but then I'll come home and just be like, nice house, but yeah, <laughs> you know, who am I sharing? You know what I'm saying? It's, oh my God. Oh, I just had a whole aha about that because it's so, that's so profound because the whole person is what's important. Yes. You know? And we're being pushed um, and prided on social media to live up to the the financial aspects of it all. Yes. And sometimes even the physical. Yes. Um, to a certain extent. By any means necessary, i.e., okay, get your <laughs> I'm not shooting down your surgeries or whatnot, but you're gonna come out of a, a lap band or, or lipo with the same mindset. Yes. 
So what you gonna keep getting you? You know, right. so so how do we get to the whole person? Like you've had to, to deal with kidney disease and you've had to deal with, you know, different things in your life and losses. And then it brings you to a place where you have to discover this is my process and I have to surrender to that process. Someone who's listening today and they're they're there and they know I'm ready to surrender, how do they find out the process that that works for them? I think the first thing is that you have to know where you are. Yeah. You, you know, so many times we're focused on where we want to get to. Yeah. And when I'm working with clients, even with my own self, I was like, I know where I want to get to, but where am I? Right. We don't, you, like, am I standing in the middle of a wilderness? Where, where am I? And I think before you get into any process, yeah. it's looking at where you are. I always ask myself and others, I was like, but where are you right now? What are you, what are you saying to yourself right now? How do you feel about you right now? I think about the thing that gets me the most is that people think they're somewhere that they're not because they're not paying attention to what they're even saying. I've had women that they'll say, well, you know, I really love him. He really loves me. Yeah. But then he does this and this and this and that. But I know the reason why he does that. So it justifies the why. And you stay in situations. I know I should be moving towards this career and doing this, but I have these bills to pay or I have this situation going on. Mm -hmm. But see, I know where you are. That tells me where you are about what you're saying, what's coming out of your mouth. Yeah. So my first thing to tell people is I would like to know where you are right now. Right. And let's, let's go there. Let's lean into that first. Once we can find out where we are, then we can source it out. Yeah. I'm big on sourcing it out. And when yeah. I say that, I mean, what was the first time you ever experienced such a thought? Let's source that back somewhere. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What was the first time? Was it mama? Was it daddy? Was it uncle? Was it a teacher? Right. Then once we source it out, mm -hmm. then we can deal with the emotions and the things that's happening down there. Why did it start back then? Why are you still telling that same story today after 30 years? That's the process. Mm -hmm. I do that myself all the time, April. I have stepped in events that I had to go to. Before I even open the door, I always say, check yourself at the door. Before I open the door, I'm feeling insecure about something. And I checked myself. And I'm going to be very vulnerable with this because I want to share this to show you the process. I'm walking out feeling insecure about going to this event. Right. And I check myself. I said, check yourself at the door, Lisa. And I said, what is, why, why am I feeling insecure? I said, because I don't feel like I need to be there. Source it out. Why do I don't feel like I need to be there? Because this one particular person that's dead always make me feel really bad about myself and that I'm not good enough. Mm. But why, she, why, why, why do you allow her to do that? Source it out. And I say, because I was a little girl, my father always made me feel that way. I wasn't good enough. And he always made sure to tell me that I wasn't. And he was authority. Your father. And he was someone that I wanted to impress, just like this woman at this event. This has nothing to do with her. This has to do with me and my relationship with my father and what the narrative that was told to me. Mm -hmm. I'm standing at, a, at the door going to an event, honey, and I, and I source it out and I check it at the door immediately because I don't need to bring that situation in there because I'm there to meet with God and right. what he has set up. Right. I will source it out. My Joseph has seen me. My husband has seen me do this. And he will stand there and watch me source it out. And he said, you good? I say, I'm good because I know where it's from and I know where I'm at and I know where I'm going. And I go into that situation to meet with God and I have the most incredible time and miracles happen because I allow myself to move through the process. People have to learn to get comfortable with being yeah. uncomfortable. Right. Because on the other side of that is your freedom and your destiny. Yeah. And that's rightfully ours. That's your birthright. That's yours. That's your birthright. Yes. Oh, that's good. I hope you, I hope you all are taking notes. That's good. That's good. Because I'm telling you, um, I'm going to wrap it up with some, uh, I could talk to you all day. You already know, <laughs> girl, I'm going to get my pillow and come to the house. Yes. But I want to know, you know, cause I really want, I really, really, really want Jess Brig to be so impactful in change. It's not about just being entertaining because I feel like people are hurting. People are, people are just stuck. You know what I'm saying? And they look, but they look good, honey. These filters are working. However, on the flip side, when you turn that camera off, what are you doing? Are you are you really getting to where you need to be? And I want to be a part of, of really helping you, if at all possible, with the learning curve of it all. So I think something that you spoke about, two big things, um, being aligned with God and God bringing the certain people to you. Mm -hmm. 
and you having a husband who was your... Baby, hey, you're not going to always meet a man who's willing to give you a, an organ. Yes. Can you kind of just, you know, break that down, how that happened? Because that was uh, obviously, that was divinely yeah. your man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how did you get to the point that you're dating a man and he eventually, he's your organ donor. He's your kidney donor. Hey, right. you, I mean, how many years now? Uh, we've been together for 30 years and married for 28. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Tap on that. Because people worry about, oh, I love this guy. Uh-uh. There's okay. a there's there's a person. There are people yeah. divinely for you. Yes, and I need you to recognize them yes. when they show up. You yes. understand what I'm saying? Yes. So how? Okay, quickly how? So I I had a mentor. She passed away from breast cancer um, many many years ago. Her name was Cheryl Mann. Big blue eyes and red hair. And she said something to me. I was probably 19, 20 years old. She said, Lisa, you're going to attract who you are. Mm -hmm. So she said, you need to work on that. Not no list about what you want in a man and how you want him to be and blah, 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 blah. She said, you need to work on you because you're going to attract who you are. So you think, oh, I'm great. I'm awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm this. That's what you think you need to be working on. But what I need to work on is the lies and the narratives I've been telling myself because that's what I'm going to attract. The people that's going to validate my lies and my narratives, the things that I'm saying. So I saw going deep in myself and mm -hmm. said, how do you feel about Lisa? And who Lisa is. Mm -hmm. And I worked really hard on that. Then once I worked on that, then I wrote a list from that growth of who I was. And I remember meeting my husband. I went all the way down to the physical, how he's supposed to look. And my husband looks exactly what I wanted. <laughs> and I prayed on it every single day by this tree, this oak tree in my backyard. I prayed about this man. And I remember meeting my husband and he was everything I ever prayed for him to be. And I remember him saying to me, you're my princess. You're my princess and you'll always be. And he still treats me that way. He does. And he still treats <laughs> me that way. And I remembered, he said, the one thing I noticed about you is that you are a woman that was very strong, but you're also a woman that also understood the leadership of a man in a relationship mm -hmm. with all your strength. And mm -hmm. my husband's very attracted to that. My strength, but also me understanding who he is as a man. I don't have to be a man. God created me to be a woman, and that's good enough. That gets the job done over and over again. And my husband loved that about me. What brought the kidney transplant was this. He, he dated me. I was sick. He would take me to the hospital for dates sometimes. Because sometimes I had to go to the hospital, and then we'd go out to eat. But my husband knew I was sick, and I had kidney disease. And I remember when I got extremely sick, and I was in a coma for three days, I remember my husband praying, could, God, I want to be the one to save her life. Mm. I didn't know he prayed that prayer. What we do is that we do New Year's resolutions, but they're prayers, and we switch them out the next year to see what God has made happen. Wow. So we never tell each other what we're writing. We just switch it out to see what God has made happen. The year after I had my transplant, my husband, he gave me his paper, I gave him mine. And right there at the top, he said, God, let me be the one to save my wife's life. And he was the one that saved my life. And let me tell you something funny about us. We always have our dates. When he gave me his kidney, two days after the transplant, a nurse rolled that boy down with some graham crackers and some, uh, what was it, some cranberry juice that the hospital gives you. And he said, I said, what you doing out of bed? He said, I'm here for our date. He said, I'm never going to miss a date. I'm here for our date. You're going to have women look for that tree. I know. <laughs> that tree that tree you prayed by. The oak tree. So now I'm like, I think Lisa's tree and Sierra's prayer. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. That is beautiful. And that's what surrender gets you. It does. God can write this story way better than we can. Okay. I give him the pen every time. I be trying to take it back sometimes. But I'm like, here you go. Because yeah. I'm not good at this. Yeah. <laughs> Been writing for a long time. Let me close mine. What you got for me? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Oh my God. Now another thing, as we wrap up, I really, really have a large audience of <laughs> church folks. Okay. Okay. And you guys, if you follow me, you know me. She'll pop something on Facebook or Instagram or Threads in a heartbeat, and and then I just like let the chips fall where they may. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because I'm surrendered to my truth. And God said, you know, and I just get on my soapbox. But to just bring it all down to, to balance. Balance. We love God. We love God. Thank you, Jesus. However, <laughs> sometimes folks will impose their beliefs on you based on what they say God said. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking, 
no, I don't know if God said it like that to me. So I, the fusion and what's, what God has brought me to as it relates to these healing practices, these yeah. wellness practices, yeah. um, sometimes it's a disconnect. Yeah. You know, like someone will question my little piece of amethyst or my little piece of quartz. You know what I'm saying? That God made, right? God, right, God, right, right. God created it, right? Yeah. Um, what What are you, because I know, I know you're a believer. I know you're yeah. in church. I know you've prayed with me. I pray with you. Um, but I've also, we've done, you know, energy work and yeah. that sort of thing. What is your take on that in the stance of that church? And what God says and has revealed to you, you know, which is relative to each person. It is relative to each person. That's a good question. Oh, all these, I've been doing this for 25 years. I I get it too. I I get it all the time. And I'm just like you. I was like, you know what? God made these beautiful stones, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think it is how we take everything. Yeah. We attach something to an idea or fear. And then we try to project that onto people. Fear. And that's Fear. what it is. So I think about it like this, and I'm just going to be really real because I've had to have this conversation with someone. God created sex. Right. We do all kinds of things with that. With that. And do. <laughs> okay. All the time. Yeah. But sex is a beautiful thing that was created by God yeah. for us to connect with one another and to create a beautiful relationship is part of a beautiful relationship and bring about creation itself. Yes. But we make it into all kinds of things, mm-hmm. right? I think we do the same thing with just God created crystals. And so because crystals are used in a way mm-hmm. that is some is not great, some ways it's sourced it, how it's sourced out. Then when it is used in a way that is for healing, that is for something positive, yeah. then we're like, oh, it's bad because it was a it was originated like this when it was used. This is right. how it was used. So yeah. because it was used this way, so then it's bad. So you can't do anything with it. Right. So we make it a bad thing. When we yeah. think about good energy yeah. and energy that's not so good, we make it into this thing out of fear. Yeah. And I remember explaining that to someone. And I was like, the work that I do, this is of God, the work that I do. Absolutely. I'm not using anything. It's not of God. These are God's creations. Right. And what we cannot call that bad because God created because it was used mm-hmm. in a way it is supposed to be. Yeah. God created sex because it's been used in a way it is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. You can't say, well, sex is bad. Right. How we use it. Yeah. That's the thing that yeah. is not of God. Right. But it is a beautiful thing. And that's how I explain it to people. Because there I know you. sex gets to people when you tell them that because yeah. we all know what we're doing with that. Right. But no bear everybody in my clothes about that one. Yeah, and that's why you're here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Somebody had to engage in sex for you to be here. Right, exactly. Tuned so, in. Right, tuned in. Yeah. And so I look at everything else, herbs and Yeah. You know, it's like God created, but what we do yeah. makes it what it is. That's what that's what. You know, if, you it's, if it's a weapon, if yes. it's used to defend me mm-hmm. and save my family's life. Yes. Or if it's used to rob a bank, exactly. It's still a weapon. Exactly. It's also that what you do with them. Yes, that's a good way to break it down. Mm-hmm. I just want to make sure we touched on that because yeah. I just don't want people to miss out on opportunities. There's so many things that you can do to get yourself. I'm from therapy to wellness practices yes. to yoga. Trying yeah. to find a way to drag yoga into the abyss. Like, oh, that's not okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not praying to any deities. I'm just trying to get, you know, I'm just trying to get this hip loose. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, is that okay? Is that right. okay? So, yeah. So, I, I just love all the things we can explore. And, I mean, like I said, your wealth of information. And I will always be calling on you. You will see her back. Lisa, again, we have a little special segment in her kitchen. Because once you get in that kitchen. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. So, tell everybody. Any closing last words, first of all. Oh, well, first of all, thank you for having me. This has, been, this has been so incredible. Mm-hmm. I think if I wanted to close with anything, I want to encourage people to be more mindful in their lives. Be more mindful in your life. Yeah. And that just means being in the moment that you are in. Yeah. Because you don't get it back. No. I know what it feels like to be dying. Mm-hmm. So I want to encourage people, be in this moment now because it's the most important one. Same. Yeah. Same. Now tell everybody I can catch up with you, work with you, follow okay. you. Well, you can catch up with me on Living Loving Life with Lisa Washington on Instagram. You can catch me on Good Day Atlanta Fox 5 News every month with my healthy wellness segment, which I enjoy doing and working with them. And I'm also on Facebook. And I'm also on TikTok. Yeah, I saw you. Oh, my. 
I, I think it, it's a great platform. Thank for you. you. Loving yeah. Lisa Washington 33. That's yeah. my spiritual number. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. And of course, everything I'm doing from retreats to uh, my podcast, you will see her face. <laughs> so stay tapped in with us. And thank you guys for tuning in. And don't forget, like, subscribe, download. Thank you, Lisa Washington, yeah. for being on here with us. So we're just going to breathe our way out of here. Deep breath in. Because <laughs> we talked about a lot. Process it. And we'll see you next time.